but if you do not have a loss function quadratic loss function is a good place to start. Now, the question is this is fine this quadratic is taken care by this particular term y minus m the square, but how do you decide the k because that k will again influence if I have a k of let us say 2 and this y minus m is 3 units and uh, so 3 times uh, 3 raised to 2 is 9, 9 times 2 is 18. Instead if I made the k to be 3 then it could be 27 and so, it's, so this k plays an important role. How do you decide on the k? It is just a parameter estimation. If I have a set of points that looks like it follows a linear trend. What is the form of the equation? Y equal to m x plus c. Okay. The only difference between this and this is let us not worry about the c for now. This is just x. In our case we are doing x squared and still in this case also you will have to find this coefficient, you will have to find this coefficient. It is only a coefficient finding problem. Okay. Do not do not directly relate that m to this m, they are different. Okay. Since you are used to this in general, I am using this function here. Okay. So, you need to find this m. How will you find this m? You can, oh, the slope is a general term that you use, but it can be extended to n dimensions also. Hmm. So, uh, so, basically you do a minimum least square formulation and then you can find this m. In a similar fashion you need to or you we use the word called fitting, curve fitting. Okay. So, if you do a curve fitting then you will find the k. What will be the motivation for that curve fitting is the errors should be minimal. Meaning after I fit this curve okay, at this point if you take this particular point that we are talking about. We are talking about okay. you see this arrow head that is what is my original value, but if I use this curve to predict it I am getting the cross. So, there is a small error between the two. So, I will have an error here, I will have an error here, I will have an error here. So, like this I have multiple errors. The moment you have multiple things what do you do? you take an RMS because I need one metric. I will not ask you, hey can you tell me how accurate the curve is here? I will ask you how good is the curve. So, you need to give me one metric. So, when you have multiple spots, you will do an RMS. So, what you do is, is you do an RMS of these errors. So, you say error 1, error 2, error 3 up to error n. Then you take an RMS of these guys. It is the same story. Error can be positive or negative. So, I say squared, I make a sum, I take an RMS and then I do this. Okay. Then what I might want to do is, is I might want to minimize this error. Okay. I want to find a best fit curve because I can I can have a curve that passes like this, that passes like this, that passes like this, that any number of curves, but which one will I select? I will select one that will minimize these error. So, that is why it is called a minimum least squared. You find the least squared error. So, the curve will not pass through all the points, but the trade off in the error is minimal in the best fit line. In a similar fashion, this is this is a small digression to what we are discussing, but in a similar fashion, if you do an optimization problem formulation, you will find an m. You will change the m and c and because the moment you change your m and c, these, this tilt will change each line is described by m and c, different m and c. So, you will find a combination of m and c for which this error is less. In a similar fashion, you can also do for a quadratic function. So, let us say that I had a bunch of data here okay, and then I have to fit this line, then I can find out what my losses are. So, you cannot just say it is quadratic is good, that is good enough information, but then you need data points to begin with to define this k okay, if it is a new product. Okay. So, there is a simple problem uh, not a problem it is just an example to motivate this discussion right. How to find the k? 
Now take a color TV intensity similar to our uh, T example that we discussed. Okay. So, the intensity is measured by some pixels. So, let us imagine that the, the nominal value for that is m. Okay. So, it can go plus or minus. There are n number of TVs that are manufactured, not all the pixel uh, color representations are the same. Okay. There can be. So, if the value varies between plus or minus 7, okay. let us say this is plus 7 and this is minus 7. What I will do is I will go and find out uh, what the loss value is and it turns out the repair cost is 9800. Okay. Now, can you tell me what the k for this situation is? You get the point? With the deviation of 7, I have a repair cost which means the loss is 9800. So, can you tell me what the k is? No, 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 no. What is the repair cost? The repair cost is means it is the, it is the loss, it is a loss. That is what I said. Here it is 9800, okay. What is the loss in this equation? L of y equal to 9800. L of y is equal to 9800. This is k times y minus m the whole squared. What is y minus m in our case? It is? It is 7. So, 7 square time k. So, this is 49. So, k is going to be 200. Okay. So, this is a reverse calculation. But when you want to construct the curve, you will have samples and then you will find your k. Okay. Okay. Now, let us go back. Just in case uh, with this k, can you tell me what will be the loss at an m equals 4? It is? 3200 rupees that is 200 is the k value my deviation is 4 raised to 2 is 16 so 16 times 200 is 3200 okay so 3200 rupees is what the loss is do you understand so if one second one second so if this is 4 then my loss is 3200 this is 9800 yeah it's not on to scale i'm just giving yeah what's there a question why is it Sorry? Isn't y is equal to 4? No, no. y minus m is 4. y minus m is equal to 4. Okay, I know where you are asking that question. This is not equal to. There was an error. It is not equal to. They, they change the slide, but it is not equal to. It is m plus or minus 7 is what the deviation is. Okay, now, now I got the point. I will change that here. It is not, you see here, that is the correct one. m plus 4. This is not m equal to. This is m plus or minus 7. Sorry. Thanks for the information. Okay. So, it is m plus 7 minus 7. Anywhere, I will get the same error. But that need not be the case. This is called the nominal the best. Meaning, nominal is this. If you go less, if you go more, I have a problem. You need to go in this. That is all. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, you get the point, right? So, there is a quality. What we discussed in the quality is, I promise, you expect. The moment there is deviation from what I promised in terms of performance or of what you expected, then both sides are going to have a loss. So, there is a disappointment and quantifying the disappointment is what the loss function is. So, you can say the disappointment could be anything, right? For instance, if you are talking about a uh, uh, okay, it is always not disappointment. Disappointment is just a word that I am using to, to get the message across. For instance, if you are talking about a, a nuclear power plant, okay. So, there is a small deviation, sir. There is about one unit radiation leak. You think it is okay? It is not okay. You have to shut down that entire plant. 
if there is a radiation or whatever that product is you have to cut down on that project immediately okay you cannot afford to do that okay so whereas you buy a 5 rupee pen okay and then the manufacturer figures out in that particular series okay there is some writing issue okay they're not going to have a recall it's okay it's not a big deal they're not going to have a recall but if you're a car manufacturer and your airbags have a problem you figured out after three months of selling you figured out that a particular series the airbags will not open up the correct way you have to have a recall okay so the loss function is not the same for all of them meaning the 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 k for the loss function is not necessarily the same for all of them okay it's not necessarily but it's it's not the same it depends on the application it depends on what the consequences are okay you get the idea right okay so uh, are there different loss functions okay yes so for instance this is nominal the best that's what we discussed just now right our t example okay so it means i have a nominal value i go plus or i go minus there is a problem so for instance our washer okay or any manufacturing you will have this nominal the best so i want 5 mm i can accommodate 4.8 or i can accommodate 5.2 okay so it is this way or that way it is nominal the best so you can take smaller the best okay so can you give an example of smaller the best class timings smaller the better okay we don't want 50 minutes can you have like 20 minute class can you have 10 minutes class i'll be happy okay so smaller the better any example any other example of smaller the better when you have a flight change change over your layover time smaller the better so any other example any other example of smaller the better sorry what fluctuation ha huh, daily fluctuations in bitcoin <laughs> okay that's a kind of the most recent case okay so that's one thing then um, radiations from your cell phone or computer or any media device you want to keep it as minimal as possible see you don't want to get rid of it you cannot say oh you cannot use a cell phone you cannot use a computer now we all know that there is no life without these media devices so but as a manufacturer or as a user you expect the radiations to be as less as possible so smaller the better in this case right okay so you understand the curve do you so there is no what what it says is the smaller the deviation is the better the loss is zero okay the moment your deviation goes this side because after this i mean this is a limit because it's normalized to zero but if it is not normalized i can go beyond this also but then it's smaller so how much ever smaller it is the better it is but you cannot get beyond this it's zero that's all that's the best you can have so the moment you start deviating from it on the right side or on the positive side on the more side then the loss is also going to be large so this is smaller the better larger the best or larger the better is here okay so this is the other side of the curve if you look at it okay so what it says is i'm going on the right side which means the deviation is larger okay the deviation is larger and my loss is less you understand right so i say that here is a value and then i'm going away from that when i'm going away from that the more the deviation is the better it is for me okay so can you imagine a case like that sorry return on investment any example you take 50 km per liter 55 km i am going to give i am going to de develop an engine that will give you 80 km per liter larger the better okay what is the salary larger the better return on investment same time i'll go 8 hours to office for 5 days 40 hours but that job pays me 100000 rupees and this job pays me only 50000 rupees so that is a better larger the better okay good imagining that the profile of the jobs are same okay so this is larger the better okay so that is an example in this case okay return on investment that's a very good 
phrase that he used in any 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 example the investment is the same but your return okay asymmetric okay it need not be always symmetric okay when you go more okay when you deviate more on the positive side your loss could be large or less compared to your uh, uh, deviation on the other side okay so these are the different types of uh, loss functions that are possible and there are different uh, uh, see for instance this guy we saw that it is y equal to k times or sorry this is loss of y equal to y minus m the whole square right can you tell me what could this function be the smaller the best but please understand that in all these case the functions are all quadratic in nature but as i told you this is a general proposal but depending on the problem application you can have any exponential you can have linear mod of k equal to n sorry mod of k equal to n mod of k yeah? you mean the absolute value of k k is just a constant right oh you mean like that okay so okay so let's say that k is greater than or equal to 0 then it's pretty much the same any other comment on that why 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 minus m it could be just y square at least the way that i have drawn the graph it he he says that from the way the graph is presented because here it is m and it is m plus or minus so i use the word i use the term y minus m but in this case it is zero zero is the best that you can have it cannot go less than that and then i am having y so it is actually y minus m but the m in this case is zero so he says k y square that's that's fine i mean what you are telling is also correct k is greater than thing it should be y minus m but m in this case is zero that's all okay so this is fine what about larger the better sorry reciprocal of smaller the best correct i will just i'll just say 1 over y square it can be k times 1 over y square does not matter 1 over k because it's just a constant any day anyway okay so this is just a reciprocal of 1 over y square but there are also other ways in which you can represent it this is not the only way that you can represent it okay so there is a nice intuitive feeling in this i like the way he told he said that it's a inverse of smaller the better smaller the best or smaller the better so these are usually called n type nominal the better this is called s type so yeah just remember you know you don't really need to memorize this but um, sometimes people uh, people you know um, miss remember they say l type means lower the better there is no lower it is only smaller the better you will have to be careful when i describe it i might write it as l type but l means larger the better but if you recall it as lesser the better then it's gone okay so it is only smaller larger nominal okay and then of course there is an asymmetric asymmetric depending on what you are looking at this it's it's again k y minus m the whole squared but on the other side this k might be different so this is k1 y minus m the whole square this is k2 y minus m the whole square that's all okay so that k will influence the shape it's still a quadratic function but that k will tell you how steep it is or how shallow it is okay fine so now as we discussed you have a question yeah, yeah. asymmetric uh, like delta not on the same Oh, so you mean to say that this delta naught? Huh? Yeah, this delta naught is not necessarily the. Yeah, 
from the y axis meaning the the x axis which is the y here <laughs> from that axis perspective it is not the same distance wise it is not the same yeah you are right. The idea I guess here is for the same loss you have different that is the point. In this case if you stake for A naught the deviation is the same. In this particular example if you see for the same A naught the deviations are the same whether you are in the negative or you are in the positive side. Your, your point is valid this cannot be delta naught. If this is delta naught this is delta 1 and this is delta 2 something of that sort. The delta is not the same that is yeah, all. If it is symmetric, then it is yes you are right. Okay. Any other question? I mean of course, we are going to discuss about the average quality loss, but before that any other questions? Okay. So, just before this discussion, we had a discussion about our 6 sigma and 4.5 sigma you might remember, right? So, the deal is in that if you see your loss is not going to be the same. If you take one distribution per day, the loss is not going to be the same. So, I might have a loss of y1 and y2 meaning like y1, y2, y3 like that I have different losses here. So, what is the average quality loss correct? The moment you have more than one okay. If someone is asking for the performance I need to take the average performance of the class okay. I can only tell the average height of the class in a similar fashion when your loss is not the same. So, please remember that engine number 1 and engine number 7 you can hope that they will perform the same, but they need not perform the same. They are not likely to perform the same. I have 60 students in the class. All of you are going to sit for placements, but the company which is going to come and interview you cannot expect all of you to perform to the same level. Of course, there will be a minimal and a maximum level that they expect you to perform but all of you will not perform to the same level okay there will be variability right so in a similar fashion so the first car model might have a loss of this the seventh car model might have a loss of this seventh car not the model okay so if i want to understand the average loss of that entire fleet then i have to add all of them right so loss of y1 plus loss of y2 plus loss of yn so there are n instances then I will have to add up all the losses and then I have to take a mean ok. So, this is something that you can try to do as an exercise after you do a couple of algebraic steps because we know the L here from here you know the L right. So, the L is k y minus m square. So, you can plug in those values here for y1, y2, yn and you do a couple of algebraic steps what you will end up getting is you will end up getting this equation. So, please remember you can take the uh, nominal the better case the k is going to remain the same. So, this k can be taken out, but you will have that y minus m is going to vary m will remain the same it will be y 1 minus m the whole square plus y 2 minus m the whole square plus y 3 minus m the whole square plus y n minus m the whole square. It is a very simple step couple of steps you do you will end up with this equation ok. So, what does this equation say? There are two quantities in this equation that you are already exposed to. So, one is the mean mu and the other one is the standard deviation. So, what it says is the quality loss consists of two terms. The first one is the variation of the average around the target. We will see what it means. The mean squared deviation of the y around its own mean ok. So, there are two things here. So, one is there is a target that is given. What is the target? 50 kilometers per liter in the motorbike that you bought that is a target, but on day 1 you take 48 kilometers per liter on day 2 49 kilometers per liter on day 3 45 kilometers per liter, on day 4 52 kilometers per liter. So, there is variability in the performance, but you can also after one month if I ask you what was the performance of your motorbike, you are not going to say me on day 1 it was 48, on day 2 it was 49. What you are going to say on an average I had a, 
uh, mean value of about 48 kilometers per liter. So, that is this one. The target is the 50 kilometers per liter that I promised you and this mu is the average that you got over a period of one month. So, the first one is the difference between these two guys and it is the square of that. Okay. Then, did you get because I always told you taking the mean is only one part of the story. When a batsman comes in, if I give you only the average, it tells you only one part of the story. Okay. You also need to know what was the deviation, you need to know what is the spread and what this spread, this sigma tells you is what was the worst, what was the best that you got. Oh, did you get 54 kilometers per liter? That means this engine is capable of going to 54 kilometers per liter. You got 35 kilometers per liter, that was pretty bad. Okay, so this sigma, what it says is the sigma around the performance of your engine, not the promise that I made. This sigma is related to this mu, that is what it says, around its own mean. You got 48 kilometers per liter, that is the mean that you got over one month period. But what was the deviation in that? Was it 2 kilometers or was it 5 kilometer deviation? That is this information. Okay? So, the quality loss function, the average quality loss is k times this squared plus that standard deviation. Okay? So, as you can see, the units will turn out to be, uh, the units will work out. Okay? So, if you do this, there are a couple of steps which I expect you to do, you will arrive at this value. Okay. So, this is one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is called the SN ratio. Okay. So, the SN stands for signal, S stands for signal, N stands for noise. Okay. This come from electrical background and this was proposed by Taguchi. Okay. Since Taguchi, if you remember that I told, was an electrical engineer and for whatever reason he was recruited to uh, apply his techniques on the manufacturing industry so that they wanted quality products, basically electronic products that they wanted to do. So, what he did is, he used this idea from electrical engineering. Okay? So, in electrical engineering, if you see uh, any electrical stuff that you take is represented using signals, any, any electrical stuff. right? So, they always wanted to compare signals. So, this is case A and this is case B. Okay. So, the idea about electrical signals is though you would like to have this, you cannot have that. There is always noise. Okay. So, very simple. You have fever. You take the thermometer, you put it in your armpit or you put it in your mouth. You think that it is going to stay in one value, it will just keep fluctuating. Okay? You stand on a digital weighing machine, small change it will, it will keep on oscillating there is because that all these are calibrated devices in spite of that. Okay? That is why you use filters, Kalman filter, this filter and all, all those type of filter, they will let you, you know, give you a single value. But in reality, the signals are like this. There is always noise in that. Okay? So, now, the way in which they will compare two signals is because the signal is not one value. right? So, this is x, this is also x. The signal is not one value, it is lot of values. So, immediately your point is I will take a mu. What else will I say? Around this mu, what is my noise? Any variation from my mean? is my deviation, right? So, signal to noise. I will compare this signal to noise to this signal to noise. So, now there are different perspectives. This may not work the same way in electrical, but the idea is once you have a quality that is varying or once you have a quantity that is varying, what I wanted to know is, I want to know this in terms of consistency. Okay? Now, you can apply the same thing for a batsman. Okay. 
if you do this for Sachin Tendulkar and Shevak, for instance, that you know these examples, right? The average might work out to be the same, might, I do not know exactly, but it could turn out that they have a similar average, okay? But the noise is more in Shevak because he hit up to 250. What was his highest score in one day? 260. 260 he has scored and I am not sure I need to look at the data. He might have had a more number of more occurrences with less scores also compared to Sachin Denulkar. Okay. Sachin Denulkar might share the same average and a lesser maximum, uh, what was his maximum? 200. Okay. Whereas that guy is 260, that is almost a team's score. right? So, the noise with Shevag is more, meaning the noise in the data, not the noise he makes, right? So, the noise in the data is more with Shevag compared to Sachin Tendulkar. But both of them could share the, for the case of example, do not take it in person, okay? For the case of example, let us say that both of them share the same mu. Then what happens is, I am going to, for Shevag, I am going to have a larger noise, which means I am going to have a larger sigma. You understand, right? When I, if I am going to plot the data, Shevak's data has 1260, whereas for Sachin Tendulkar it will stop at 20. So, when I am measuring the standard deviation, the deviation is more for Shevak compared to Sachin Tendulkar, assuming that their means are the same. So, Shevak is going to have a larger deviation compared to this person. So, if their means are same, when I am dividing it by a larger deviation, what will the SN ratio be? The value in a comparative sense for Shevak is lesser because my denominator is larger for Sheva compared to Sachin Tendulkar. Okay? So, in this case, if you are talking about a consistent player, okay, you are not talking about whether this person is going to go and hit a 300 for me today. That might be the case in T20. But if you are looking at uh, one day games and especially if you are talking about the first down or second down, you want a consistent player who will go and stabilize the game. But if your openers did a great job, then what you want to do is, is you want to send someone who has a potential of creating noise, larger noise. He might go and hit all, all, all sides and he might get a bigger score. So, otherwise you want to get someone who is more, who will stabilize the game, then you will send someone who is more, more consistent, who has less noise. So, the SN ratio can be used the way you want it. Okay? So, we will see how that is used in this case. Okay? So, here this SN ratio is essentially this mu is also squared, the sigma is also squared. See, sigma and mu are of the same units. Okay? We are just squaring it here and this 10 log 10 is just a, it is just a normalization value. Okay? See, the deal is sometimes your uh, sigma is 0 0.001. If you square it, it is going to be even smaller. So, let us say your mu is even of the order of 1 or 2 it is going to give you a long, you know, it is going to be a very big number. Okay? So, in order to normalize that, we are taking a log. Okay? So, you can, yeah, this is just normalizing the data. This does not add much value to the information. So, this is just, so what is SN ratio? This is your S, which is your mu. This is N, which is your standard deviation, that is your noise. So, the ratio of mean over standard deviation is your SN ratio. Okay? So, it captures the idea of robust design. Okay? How? Because you want to be as close as possible to your mean okay? and the deviation should be minimal. So, I need to have a minimal deviation, but I want to stay as close as possible to my mean. So, what it means? I need to have a larger or smaller SN ratio. Sorry? You want to have a larger SN ratio because I want to minimize my noise. So, if I am going to minimize the denominator, my ratio will become large. So, from a design perspective, I want to maximize my SN ratio. Okay? So, how do I formulate a problem using robustness is, if you have data points, then you can estimate your SN ratio then I would like to maximize, give me a design combination that will maximize my SN ratio that will correspond to my robust design. That is what the deal is. 
So, maximizing SN ratio is equivalent to minimizing quality loss. Is that fine? So, we are running out of time, but I will just conclude with one example. Okay. So, this will give you some idea. Okay. So, this is a classical case which is available in the book that we discussed. Okay. Uh, so, Sony TV example. Okay. So, Sony you know where their roots are, they are from where they originated in Japan. Okay. So, uh, this this happened a few decades ago. Okay. So, Sony was making TVs in Japan at some point in time uh, people in the US were buying TVs from Japan. So, it was imported and brought to Japan. Then I do not know maybe the government uh, is in the uh, business norms and then Sony set up a shop in uh, US. Uh, when I say set up a shop, they also set up a manufacturing unit. But when they started selling the uh, TVs that were manufactured in the US, they realized after a while people preferred buying the same Sony TVs from Japan, though it was expensive than buying it from the US. You get the point? Sony was selling TVs in the US that was made manufactured in the US, but people preferred buying it from Japan the same model. Okay, They preferred buying it from Japan though the cost was more. So, now Sony was confused or at least Sony US was confused. So, why would people buy more for the same pay more and buy the same model at a higher cost? Then they figured out people said that the quality okay, of the images maybe in terms of pixels or something, the color intensity was much better in the Japanese counterpart than the US counterpart. So, then what Sony immediately did is they wanted to understand what is happening. So, they took about equal number of TVs from both the Japanese side and the US side and they compare the probability distribution. Okay. So, what it turned out is Okay. So, this is an interesting graph. Okay. Now, let us call this the intensity that we are talking about. Okay. Any idea on which curve is from which place? Sorry, the flat one is from? and this is my target. Okay. Actually, as a matter of fact, I should draw it even better. Okay. So, if you have understood what I have told so far, you do not need any explanation on this plot. But for the sake of completeness, I will tell you what it is. Okay. What these people figured out is, as you can see from the graph, there were more occurrences closer to the promise that was made. Okay. This is the promise that they made, the target. Okay. And there were more occurrences, this entire region, right? Okay. And as they went away, when they went away from the promise, the numbers reduced. You can see how different it is with these two guys. Okay. 
and actually as a matter of fact I do not know whether this was the case with the Sony the actually, but it can be beyond ok. There were there were few things that were below the lower specification limit and upper specification limit. These are the upper and lower specification limits. There are situations in the Japanese stuff, I am just telling and you know this need not be the real case ok. It would have been a case where there were even products that were beyond the lower specification limit and above the upper specification limit, but still people preferred this. The reason is because there were more occurrences closer to the target compared to these guys in spite of they being between the lower and the upper specification limit in an uniform sense did not help. You get the point? So, it is very important to stay as close as possible to the target, as close as possible to the, you cannot say oh it is this plus or minus, so I will do it this way. So, this plus or minus is called the goal post principle ok. So, what is a goal post principle? You have a goal post in a soccer game. So, if you are going to hit in the center, I will give you 5 points. If you are going to hit here, I will give you 2 points. Is that how we do? Does not matter. You do it here or you do it here or you do it here, everywhere it is only one goal. So, that is called the goal post principle. So, the US in this example, the US TVs, the Sony TVs kind of followed that principle. They said as long as you are within the lower and upper specification limit, you are fine. That is not true. And the equivalent loss function for the, so this is x and this is your loss function, right? So, y, sorry. Okay. So, this is how it is. What it means is this is 0 and this is 1. It is a binary. It says when you vary from here to here, there is no loss. The moment you cross this line, your loss is 1, ok. As you can understand, what Taguchi said is that is not true. Your loss function goes like this. Even a small deviation, there is a little bit of a loss. The more the deviation, the loss is more, the, the loss is more, 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 ok. So, there is a relationship between this and this, ok. So, this meaning the quality, the goalpost principle corresponds to the US stuff and this corresponds to the quadratic loss function. You get the point? So, if I am going to keep my distribution smaller and smaller, my loss is going to be smaller and smaller. If I am going to have a fatter distribution, my loss is going to be larger. So, that is where the idea of using the statistical distribution in uh, controlling robustness comes into picture, ok. In robustness, we just said that oh, you need to minimize your sigma as much as you want, ok, around the target that you promised. But how does it reflect in the quality loss function? This is how it reflects. Because the more you deviate from your promise, the more is your loss. So, that is how it comes, ok. So, ok, fine, I will wrap up here for today.